There's been a lot of interest lately in restoring machines like this, older Superbas and Singers, and I share that interest. It's a great thing to do, but they absolutely require weights, and initially they came with combs like this one. Very often the secondhand machines you find to restore don't have them. They've gotten lost. The combs have a wire that slides in and out. You really, really need something to perform this function, but it does not have to be this, and I'll show you how to make a weighted hem that will do the job. It's easiest to start with the beds lowered so that we have the maximum amount of elbow room up here. And I usually succeed in doing this working every other needle. So we'll put every other one out of work so that you can have the good position. Not a loop, a kind of loose one. And we're going to loosely e-wrap because we got to work something into these e-wraps to rig up temporary weights so as to be able to knit the hem that will then be our permanent apparatus. Here's what I'm going to use. You probably have already bought some double eye needles because they're a very routine tool that we need for working with our knitting machines and you can make use of one here. I'm going to run it through the e-wraps, making sure it really does go through the loops so it's caught. And pull back because I really want the rigid needle in here under all these e-wraps for the first couple rows. After that, it won't matter very much. You will need to buy some weights, but they do not have to be from any particular brand. This is a passive one that came with the optional comb, and it works well, but any brand could be made to work. So we have this double eye needle as something rigid into those e-wraps that's going to hold the weight because I'm going to hang the weight on the pink yarn. and try to keep it as even as I can till I've gotten a few rows knitted. At this point, we could just e-wrap and hope for the best. But last time I did that, it didn't go as well as I hoped, so I'm going to show you something a little more foolproof. Start with a loop as usual. E-wrap would be cursive letter E around each needle in order. Never make them very tight on this particular machine. But double e-wrap is under two, back to the first one, and pull back. So there's a complete stitch now on this needle. Under two, back to the first one, close the latch and pull back. This makes the first row that the machine has to knit on its own a little easier for it. And believe me, if your machine finds it easier, so will you. So what's double about it is not the shape we're making, it's that it's under two. And then simultaneously as you're making a wrap, we're creating a stitch by the pulling back. It makes a nice looking edge. It's a finished closed edge. It can be the only edge if you need it to be. And certainly for cast on rag, that's all we do need. and I'm threading the machine off to the right where you can't see. And we'll close up the bits. Pulling and adjusting so that everything's pulling down. Let's get these other needles out of the way. Make sure only the ones we want are up. From here it should be pretty smooth, but sometimes the first row is not. It was, but had it not been, I would just examine each one of these stitches, correct it, and keep going. 
So after knitting the first few rows, just four, to get it going, two or four, we're going to begin bias knitting, which means decrease one on the left. Bias refers to the diagonal nature. And of course, because we keep decreasing and increasing, we'll be knitting a diagonal piece of knitting. I increased with a simple increase, one on the right, two rows, and repeat across. Here you see me working in the middle of the bed, but that's for demo purposes because it's easier to film here. In reality, you would start at the far left edge of the bed and work to the right. And if you ran out of room on the right, you would scrap off and move your knitting all the way back to the left so as to make however long a cast on rag you want it. Time to knit two rows. One two, decrease on the left, increase on the right. True, there are fancier increases, but this is really the one we want. Knit two rows, and watch out for this kind of stuff. The fact that this stitch did not knit off perfectly means I need to adjust what weights I have. Your improvised weights may not be ideal in distributing the pressure. Decrease, increase. This is the third time. Decrease, increase. And then every fifth time, we're going to do something a little different. And here it comes. Same thing, plus one more thing is what I really should say. After doing the usual, one, two, three, four, five, count to the fifth stitch. Move it to the next needle over. Leave that needle in work. This will create an eyelet that we're going to need. I've used the term simple increase, which is what we're doing, and in case you're newer, that is placing a new needle into work. If you only place one into work next to the main knitting, it will pick up and begin to form stitches without any further ado. It also forms a loop on the edge of the fabric, normally not something we really want, but in this case we absolutely do. And by the way, if you lose count and you do it on fourth or sixth time, there is no tragedy. It'll still work. Make an island. And march on across the bed. Continue however long you want the item to be, and you can see it developing. We're going to be using these loops that were created with the, in, the simple increases. And then we'll bind off. I'm going to bind off my least favorite direction because it's the way that will most keep my hands out of your way. Transfer it to the next needle. Pull the needle forward. Wrap a loop of yarn in. Close the latch. Pull back. And that's stitch is bound off. Move the stitch to the next needle over, forward, manually wrap and pull back, creating a fresh stitch. And it's about time to reach under here and adjust my weight. If you have another bind off that you're good at and you want to use it, that's fine. The back stitch bind off could work. You could scrap off 
and then bind off with the work off of the machine. Here's our initial jury rig setup. I should be able to break this yarn, what you'd think, and pull it out. And here it comes. This is a heavy steel rod. It doesn't have to be steel, but it does need to be heavy, so don't pick aluminum. This kind of thing is available at places like Home Depot. And they'll usually cut it to length, to the length you want. Here's what the eyelets are for. We're going to push this heavy rod in and out of the eyelets, which is going to perform a couple of important functions. It will give some weight to the hem, which it desperately needs to knit on a superba type machine. The machines that I have that most require weight are my more modern Superba, the Heimstricker, aka Suitcase Superba, and Orion. They are all double bed European machines and all constructed similarly, and they just require weight to knit well. The Passive is also a European machine that is not so fussy about weight. Now when we want to cast on, we hang these loops, one per needle. Sometimes you can hang every needle, sometimes every other needle, depending on what you're doing. Then a row of ravel cord, and then you're able to cast on with the main yarn. And you can see this pulls down quite nicely. However, if you need more weight, and you very likely will, at this point the weights made for any knitting machine will hook onto it so that you, you can go on eBay or to any supplier and get something suitable. Let's give it a try. These are the needles I plan to use. I pulled them forward for easy spotting. Looks like this is most comfortably going to hang on every other needle. And by the way, as you use this type of cast on him, it gets easier because these loops become more pronounced. They kind of get set into position by use and reuse. Now I can drop this down beneath, but to show you weighting it down where you can't see, I'll attach this passive weight. And you can see that it, it sits on there quite well. But if the shapes were not harmonious, you could reshape this to match this better. So underneath we go. I see the rod wanting to pop up on the right. That's because it's not really centered with its weight on my stitches and I can adjust that sliding the fabric around. My hands were under there centering it and now you see it is. You should see a bump where I add the weight and I just did. Good. Now for ravel cord we'll just use a small piece of contrasting yarn. The ravel cord separates the main knitting, and a lot of times when I'm only doing a few stitches, I choose to just insert it by hand. Of course, it really doesn't have to involve the stitches that I, I mean the needles that I did not push through. So I can pull them back out of my way while I'm doing this. This step ensures that everything stays together, that it'll be easy to separate my hem from my real knitting, and that the weights stay evenly positioned. Okay, so we're done setting up. Now it's time to cast on with main yarn 
and see how the knitting goes. One thing first though, see what's happening? My end stitches are growing and growing. Knowing how much this machine prefers to have even weight, I know that will be a problem. So I can just tie my ravel cord in a bow, which can be released later, to keep that from becoming an exaggerated issue. And now close up the beds. That was too much. I should make a note for you here. On European machines, one of the differences between them and Japanese machines is that even when one is only knitting on a single bed, usually the carriage is sometimes called locks or sliders or sleds even, stay together. It knits better like that. So, as a matter of fact, I have not actually cast on. I'm just done setting up. So let's see about just a normal E-wrap cast on. And I know this machine, it does not like the E-wraps to be tight. So control your looseness. And this is a typical Japanese style cast on. But it can be used on a machine that wasn't really designed to do it. if we follow the steps that we've already followed. This could also be done if you had the appropriate combs and comb wire to match. But what I'm showing you here is an option for if those aren't available to you. Now at this point it's a good idea to make sure all the latches are open. and push the needles back to upper working position. Now let's very gently knit across. It did pretty well, not perfectly. And that first row is the toughie. Let's see if we can fix what isn't perfect. I've opened the bed so we can see a little better. And as it turns out, it looks far messier than it is. All it is is that one stitch didn't fully knit off. At this point it should begin to be quite straightforward. There we go. Smooth as silk. So with a little setup you can do a nice job. You do have to have weights, but they do not have to be the weights that originally came with the machine. Here's the knitting we did together. Here's our weighted hem. And for ease of showing you this, I've removed the rod for the time being. This looks funny at the moment, but all we have to do to separate the two is undo the bow that I made for the reasons I explained, and slide out that ravel cord. Now our hem lives to be used another day, and the initial edge of our knitting is very, very nice.